Namaste to all of you. Uh, you are watching Yoga with Dee. And today we are going to learn a very important posture in yoga, especially in Astanga, which is known as a down facing dog. You can say this posture is the foundation for the one of the very important posture in Astanga Vinyasa if you practice. So, this posture known as a down facing dog means Adhobukha Swanasana means the dog which is facing down side. So every morning many of you know if you have a dog, the dog is stretching his spine upwards. So we are learning this posture from the dog and we are trying to stretch our body like a dog. So we are going to be flexible, energetic like a dog. Okay? So that is we can learn from animals as well. So now let's see how you can do. Make sure a few things you need to remember always. In this downward facing dog, your arms is working a lot. So make sure first, whenever you practice, keep your fingers separate properly. Because as in my experience, I've seen many people, fingers are like this, like this, like this. If you're doing like this, this is your foundation of the posture, your palm and your feet. If this foundation is not active enough, so you are not able to stretch the looking you are looking for, this posture. Okay? So make sure, keep your fingers separate properly like this. You can extend your arm here and keep the fingers separate. That's why you can do 5 minutes before this kind of practice which will help you to make the feel. How does it feel when your arms are active? You can feel your arms all the way. You can raise your arms like this. And make sure this is your fingers here. Like this way. And roll the upper arm is also one of the important part. So you need to feel that how you will roll the upper arm. Okay? So there is many ways you can do the down facing dog from many basic position. So let's see how it is. So the first way is from the child pose. So here we are, head down. Now we extend our arm front, head. So first finger separate properly, and now head up, good friend. You can check always your fingers should be separate properly. First finger pointing forward will help you to open the color okay? And here you can practice, you can lift slightly here. Like this way. So you can see, you can feel the external rotation on this upper arm. It is very important to wide it. It will open the collarbone. It will open your collarbone. You will not squeeze like this otherwise. Okay? So let me show you again here. <coughs> Inhale, head up. So fingers separate properly. First finger pointing front. Okay? And now come to your knees and now turn the arms. Externally, so you will see your upper arm is going externally, so you can feel the openness of the collarbone. If your arms will go in, so you will see your neck will squeeze like this. But if you turn it outside, externally, see, so the neck will be free. So this will help you a lot when you will practice. And you will jump forward backward. If your shoulder is already stuck here, your neck is stuck here, you can't do that properly. So make sure, keep the collarbone open like this. Do not like this, okay? This is two posture. One is this and one is this. So we want this one. When we get upper, upper arm is going outside, external rotation on the upper arm will help you a lot to release the unnecessary tension around the neck. Will help you to open the collarbone, okay? Well, first things. So now from here, the fingers separate properly. Now put your toes in and lift your knees up. So this is one way to do down facing down. Keep your back straight, try to press the palm, fingers separate, arms are straight, press the palm, lift the hips high, and back is straight, leg is straight. Make sure your palm is shoulder width apart, finger is separate properly, and your leg is width apart. If you will walk your leg slightly back, so this dog is going to be a little bit long, and you can feel the leg from the spine more better. And do not drop the chest down like this, okay? So there will be too much pressure on the shoulder. So, just keep the arms straight. So, hold the arm to the torso to be straight in one line, like a straight line you can see. And just look at the navel to help you to maintain this form properly. Five, four, three, two, one. So, this is one way to do that arm facing down. Just from the child pose, you extend your arm right, push your hips back. Make sure pushing the feet and pushing the arms is very important here. If you don't push your palm and 
for safety. Can't lift the hips by hand. Okay, make sure. And always check yourself by your own. Don't be looking for a teacher to come and will check you again. You are here in the posture, down down. It will take one second for you to look for an easier thing to separate. Or not. Many people are like this, like this, like this. Even. It's not good for your waist. And your posture is going to be very good. And you can enjoy yourself. Other hand, we are wasting time in the classroom there. So try to listen. Every single time, teacher will be the down of faith and down. Even we teach, we say very clearly keep your fingers separate, fingers separate, fingers separate. Right? Very little people do that automatically. So make sure once you practice in the classroom, listen the instructions properly and try to work on it. Try to feel that properly. Second way, many times we practicing a stand like a stand and down dog is really a very matter a lot, okay? In this case, your down dog is supposed to be very good, otherwise your chaturanga will be wrong, your upward facing dog will be wrong, okay? So how you can learn that down dog is from chaturanga or from plank pose. So very simple is, you lay down here, okay? You lay down, palm is by the side of the chest. So this is how your chaturanga will be, perfect one, okay? So what you need to do is, you can lift your body up here in the plank pose, Okay, this is your plank, and then push your hips back. Sorry, there is a booster. Okay. Again, I lay down a bit further. Okay. So palm by the side of the chest, elbow in, let it toes. Lift yourself up in the plank pose, and then push your hips back. This is, you see exactly where you want to be. So this is the plank pose. Then you, this is the down facing down. Then you come here, plank pose, and drop the shoulder down. Chaturanga. So, every single time when you will do this Chaturanga, it's going to be right. If you do this a little bit wrong, down and down, maybe you will think it doesn't matter. So, let me show you how does it matter. Okay? Suppose, anyway, from here we go back to down and facing up. So, many people are here to down and down and they bring the leg closer, trying to lift the hips high like this. And if you are doing this down dog in a stand up, okay, and now from here you need to go to the chaturanga. So then you will go forward. See, where to go? Either like this, or like this. Oh, I can't do it because I don't have arm strength. It's not about your arm strength, it's about you are doing the wrong posture, which was before. That's why this is better. So this is when your down dog is soft. Now let's see what happens if your down dog is too long, okay. So now my mom is here, and this is my too long down and down. Okay? So now if I come to plank pose, see my plank pose, my mom is very different. How I do the down? See? Anyway. So people thinking, in this case, they are not have no strength. No, this is not about your arm strength. This is about you need to check your last posture before entering this posture. In some time, you have some problems. Because if your leg is tight, because of any other problem, we adjust your down dog a little front or back. So make sure, once you are entering in the next posture, again we adjust, go to the back in that normal position. That will help you. Okay? So make sure you don't do this kind of mistake in the down facing dog. Otherwise, it won't be not very good for you. Might be possible you can injure. Or maybe you will give up, because many girls give up with their strength. They say, you don't have strength. It's not only about you, many boys also can't do that. So make sure the technique, proper technique, the proper way to go into the posture, the proper way to use your body, joints and muscles is different. What do we heard, what do we study, and what do we practice can be different. We are happy to understand the anatomy of the body, okay, use your core muscles and looking for your core muscles. You see, you don't have arm strength because you don't, you can't see your very big biceps or triceps. It's not only about that much. It's also about the right technique. Are you using the right technique? If you're using the right technique, it will support your practice. If your technique is wrong, it will keep you away from your practice. You will feel something else. You're feeling less strength because of the wrong practice. Because the technique is not right, so it's not working. So you're not feeling your depth only. We see many people in our life like this, since we are teaching. 
and many people can achieve the very good chaturanga very quickly. Yeah, so that is very in, in, interesting subject. People say I don't like chaturanga. Instead of that, you're supposed to say I love chaturanga. Okay, so make sure the down dog can help you chaturanga a lot. So you keep your down dog active. Keep this dog active, alive in you, and enjoy your life. Namaste everyone. If you like the information, so please hit the like. To share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. This is Yoga Vidhi. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.